Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com and this week's tutorial on making clouds inside Photoshop. I already have open an image called Plain Skies and all I've done here is masked away the original sky so we can replace it with our own. If I go ahead and turn the mask back on we'll be able to see the Photoshop manufactured cloudy sky that we're going to recreate inside this video. And like always, there's multiple ways of doing the same job here inside Photoshop. In this video, we're going to look at what is perhaps the easiest way to create clouds. And that's what we'll be focusing on doing, by the way, how to create them rather than how to add them to an image like you see on screen here. So I'll start off by dragging our clouds layer into the trash can icon so we can recreate it. Once it's gone, we can control click the new layer icon down here. That's a command click if you're using a Mac. And that will create a new layer beneath the active one, like so. Now we need to set our background and foreground colors. And the reason for that is we're going to be using a filter to create the clouds. And that filter works by using the active foreground and the active background colors to colorize the effect. So if we start off by clicking the foreground swatch to open up the color picker and then making sure that we have the RGB values of 255 in each of the three boxes and then click OK. Next we'll click the background swatch and this time we need to set the color that we want the sky to be. So unless you're going for a special effect here then you'll want some kind of blue and the RGB values that I'm going to enter here are 0 for red. 167 for green and 231 for blue. Now I'll click OK and we're ready to apply the filter. So I'll come up here to the filters menu and I'll select the render sub menu and then select the clouds filter. We don't get any options with this particular filter so it's applied straight onto the active layer and because we've got this mask active in the top layer right here we're able to see the effect behind the plane. Now there's a couple of things to know about this filter before we move on. Firstly, it's completely random. So if we were to reapply the filter, we'd end up with a different cloud pattern. And we can test that theory by using the keyboard shortcut to apply the last used filter again, that being Control or Command F. So if I hit that shortcut and keep pressing it, keep rolling through like we are here, you'll see that no two effects are the same. Another thing you can do to add a little more punch to the effect is to hold down the ALT key in combination with the control key and you'll notice that this time we get a harsher effect. Ok I'm going to find myself an effect I'm happy with by just scrolling through a few more times here. This one looks as good as any I guess. Once we've created our clouds and sky effect we can use levels to adjust it. To show you how, I'll make sure the clouds layer is active over here in the layers palette. Then I'll come down here to this little black white circle icon. Give it a click and from the resulting menu I'm going to choose the levels command. Now I can move these input sliders to adjust the look of the clouds and sky. So I'll move the black point slider to a value of say 50, which looks pretty good here, just to increase the contrast. And then I'll go ahead and shift the midtone slider to a value of 0.85, I think will do the trick, just to bring those blues out a touch. I've got loads more information on levels, by the way, as I'm working my way through here. Loads more information on the levels command inside the freephotoshop.com website. In fact, I've got five hours of videos based around levels and other color correction techniques and tonal adjustments that can happen inside levels so some really great information there if you want to know more about levels uh, check that one out if you're interested for now I'll click OK to accept the changes and I'd say we've done a pretty good job now another thing you may not realize when you apply the filter is not only is the filter sensitive to the foreground background colors but also the size of the image so to demonstrate I'll come up here to the image menu and I'll select the duplicate command and I'll call this one Plain Skies Large, like so, and then I'll hit OK. Now I'm working on the duplicated image right now, so I'll start by dragging the clouds layer and the levels adjustment layer to the trash can. 
I'm once again control or command clicking the new layer icon to create a new layer beneath the original one. Then I'll come up here to the image menu and select the image size command. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of the image in pixels. So I'll start by making sure resample image is on. That's important if you're adding pixels to the image. Then I'll switch the width value to percent and enter a percentage of 400% like so. Now I'll hit OK to accept that change. So I'm working now with an image that's far larger than the previous one. And as a result, I'll zoom out here so we can see the whole picture on screen as we were looking at it before we did that upsampling. Now we've still got our white on blue selected as our foreground background colors. So I'll come back up here to the filter menu, select render, and then select clouds. And this time you'll see we get not a completely different effect, but a different textured effect. Actually, it's the same effect, but just responding differently, because this time we're working with a much larger document. So we're kind of zoomed out from the clouds effect here. And if this is going to cause you a problem, then you may want to consider selecting the clouds layer, then coming up here to the edit menu, and then selecting the free transform option. Now we can zoom out and resize the clouds layer to make the clouds the size we want them. This is going to involve a lot of zooming in and out, by the way, uh, as we work our way through this transformation option, as well as dragging around. But once you're there, you can hit the green confirm tick in the options bar, and you should see a big improvement. I'll go ahead and make sure this is sized appropriately for the screen view, and things are looking really nice here, I would say. If you find that the clouds are a little too rough now because of that transformation, you can go ahead and add a small one or two pixel Gaussian blur just to smooth things out a little. I'm happy with what we've got here on screen though, so I'm going to call this the finished effect. Well, thanks as always for joining me here at freephotoshop.com. More video tutorials on their way in the coming weeks, so see you next time.